All right, Proverbs chapter 15 this morning. Begin reading verse 29. I have to give credit where credit's due this morning. Miss Pam sent me a message that I really liked, and so I kind of adapted it to use this morning. So thank you, Miss Pam. That was really a good one. Uh, Verse 29 says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth in the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. The ear heareth the reproof of life, abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. This morning I will speak to you a few minutes about what's your grade on God's report card. What's your grade on God's report card? Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the word of God. And Father, now was the, you give the message and Lord, you'd give us clarity of thought. And Lord, that you'd give us the words you'd have us to speak. Father, that your Holy Spirit would take your word and your message and apply it in the hearts and lives here today. And Father, we thank you for what you'll do, and we ask you to bless the invitation. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, kids get report cards, and it's uh, report card time, I think. Getting close to report card time. and So I thought, as this outline that Pam had sent me, he talked about uh, use and points, and he used letters. And I got to looking at that uh, outline she had sent me, and it, it had the letters on report cards in it. And I thought, you know, this is like a good message. So I took it, you know, and I, sometimes we don't like report cards. I'm glad we don't get report cards for driving. Because <laughs> I guarantee you after Thursday, I would get one bad report card. I have to tell on myself, I can't tell on anybody else. I'd went up at the hospital to see Brother Tom that morning when they called me and told me it was so bad. I'd went up there in this chair, and there's a rubber that's normally around this little thing that is the throttle. And normally I have my hand on the top of it. But for some reason, I had my hand down underneath that little place where the rubber is, and it bumped the chair. And when it bumped the chair, it jammed my hand between the throttle and the chair wide open. And I couldn't get my hand out from under the throttle. <laughs> Through the chairs, throw them all up against the wall. It was a sight for sore eyes, I'll tell you. And they, now when I come to the hospital, they all go. <laughs> so if I got a, if there was a report card for driving a power chair this morning, I'd definitely get an F, probably an F minus this morning. But I believe as we look and. We take our lives this morning, we look at what God would expect us to do. What is a report card for? It's to show you where you need to make improvements in your life or where you've mastered a subject. If you get a low grade, that means that you need to improve and work on that subject and bring that grade up to where you get a masterful grade or a grade that completes the subject. Well, I believe that God has gave us things in life that he expects us to do. And we know the book of Revelation says he's keeping records. Well, that's what a report card is too. It's a record of what you've accomplished and done. And they pretty much will follow you all through your life at some point or somewhere. Well, so will God's report card. God's report card will follow you through eternity. So I want to look at some this morning. Of course, the, what's the grade we all like on report cards? A's, you bet you. I didn't get a whole bunch of them when I was in school, but we liked them. Well, John 3, verse 17 and 18 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I believe the first thing on God's report card, you either get an A for accepting him or D for denying him. One of the two. Which is it this morning? If in order to get a D on God's report card, 
Same thing you had to do to get a D on your report card in school. Basically nothing. If you did nothing, you were going to get a D or an F on the report card. This morning, if you're here and you don't know Christ, you must make that decision. It is a personal choice that no one else can make for you. It's not a choice that you can ignore because ignoring it is denying him and you get the D. You have to be in the process and make that decision to accept him. Doing nothing is denying him. And all you have to do to be lost and all you have to do to go to hell is do nothing. That's it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep on living like you're living. Just keep on ignoring God like you've been ignoring him. Keep on living for the devil like you've been living for the devil. And I guarantee you, you'll get there. It's a personal thing that you have to do. There's folks that think, well, you know, my mother, my dad, my grandma, grandma, aunt and uncle, whoever it is, they were Christians and I was raised by them or around them all my life and they took me to church. That makes me a Christian. No. Does not. You know, I... I was one of them kids. I had a drug problem when I was a kid. I was drugged to church every time the doors were open. But that didn't make me a Christian. All my relatives on my grandmother's side, my grandfather uh, was a preacher and re held revivals. And I went to all that stuff and singing and you name it, I was there. But that didn't make me a Christian. Didn't make me on my way to heaven. Being a member of a church, by the way, doesn't get you to heaven either said this many, many times, and I'll continue to say it. It's not the name on the door that gets you in heaven. It's the name in your heart. Uh, I guarantee you the name on the door has absolutely nothing to do with it. You say, well, then how do I get to be a Christian? You have to realize, number one, that you're a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. First step. Second step, the Holy Spirit has to convict your heart and say, you know what? That's you. And God loves you. Then you have to believe that Jesus Christ came and died on Calvary's cross for your sin. And that if you ask him, he will save you. Bow your head and say, God forgive me, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart and save me. That's as simple as it gets. That's all it takes. But it's something you must do for you. No one can do it for you. Well, if you can't get an A, the next best thing is what? A B. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that ye may prove what is that good, an acceptable and perfect will of God. I believe on God's report card you can get a B for believing his word or a C for compromising it. One of the two. You believe it or you don't. If you believe the word of God, you have to believe all of it. You can't pick and choose what you want to believe. You have to believe it all. If you're not going to believe it, then you have to compromise it. Well, I believe this much and this part, but I don't like this part, so that's not really, and that's what the world's doing. That's not really what it says. It really means something else. No. God says exactly what he means. Exactly what he means. He says here that you are to be a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, and here's the key word in this whole passage, Reasonable service. God's not an unreasonable God. He just wants you to believe the word of God. And when you do that, when you really believe it, you'll live according to it. I believe the reason we have people who claim to be a Christian who, when you find out it makes your teeth want to fall out, is because they really don't believe the word of God. If they really believe what God said about punishing his children, about 
how that it, he stays the devourer and the devil from you when you do what God tells you to do. If we really believe that, I believe we'd do a little bit more about what God said. But we really sometimes don't believe that like we ought to. When we believe the Word of God, what does it say it'll do? Transform. You know, that's what the world says today is what this verse says don't do. What does the world say? All just conform to us. We'll all get together and we'll all be fine and we're all going to heaven and we're all going to get there. That's conforming. The Bible says we're to be like Christ. What is Christ? What do we call Christ? He's the rock. Rocks do not conform. Jelly and water conform to whatever they're put in. We're not to be jelly or water. We're to be rocks. Rocks solid in the word of God. We're not to conform to this world. We're to tr be transformed. What does that mean? We are to be no longer what we used to be, but through a divine power to be something we're not naturally to be. It's natural to be a sinner. The Bible tells us that that's what we are, that's all we can be without God. But by the transforming power of the blood of Christ, we now can be something other than what we normally are and what we should be. Also, one of the reasons we need to believe the Word of God, what does it say? What transforms us? What is it that transforms us? Of course we know that the Holy Spirit transforms us the minute we get saved. We're transformed from a child of the devil to the child of the king from on our way to hell to on our way to heaven. But you understand every day the world's trying to reverse that. And the devil's trying to work to reverse that. Notice what he said. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What keeps you transformed on the outside? God transforms the inside. You can't change that. Thank God. I'm glad. But the outside needs to be fixed too. How do you do that? By the word of God. Believing the word of God. And when you do, it will transform your life. And if you believe it like you should, then you won't conform, but transform. That's what we need today. Well, A's are great, and B's are not quite as good, but if you can't make any A's and B's, I made a lot of these. Next one down on the list is what? C. C's, not too bad. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, But I keep my body... Keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. This is a tough one. I believe on God's report cards, you either get C for controlling the flesh. Or a B for being belligerent. Oh, we're getting tough now, aren't we? Got quiet. I don't hear any amens. What, what happened out there? Remember, who's in, who's, who is it that can keep you in control of you? You. You. You know, today our world says I have the right to say anything I want to to anybody I want to, anytime I want to, and it makes no difference. No, you don't. Remember the golden rule. What does the golden rule say? Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. I guarantee you the people that are belligerent don't want people being belligerent to them. People that are unfriendly don't want people being unfriendly to them. Well, don't be that way then. Be like we ought to be. Watch how you act and what you say. Because it's a proof to others of what you really are. The Bible tells us, and for lack of time, I'm not going to give you a bunch of scriptures. The Bible says that out of the mouth proceeds the things of the heart. Be careful what you say. What did it take for Peter to prove he wasn't one of Jesus' disciples? Wasn't the way he was dressed. Wasn't the way he was acting. 
it wasn't even the place he was at. What was it? What came out of his mouth? He cursed and they said, nope, they ain't one of them. Be careful how you act and what you say. The world is looking at us. The Bible says that we are epistles read by the world. They're looking at you and they're reading your life and your actions and your words. What do they see when they see you and hear you? What do they see and they hear when they walk in this church? Oh, well, now it's going to get real quiet. What do they see and what do they hear when they walk in here? They see you acting like you ought to be acting. They see you with the attitude you ought to have as a Christian. They see you talking and speaking with the attitude and the words you ought to as a Christian. Be careful. Because all of these can ruin your testimony. They'll ruin your testimony in a heartbeat. By the way, it'll ruin this church's testimony in a heartbeat. Well, we went to A and B's and C's. And if you really going to skim by by the skin of your teeth, you can get by with a D. Done that a time or two. <laughs> Jude 1, 21 and 23. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment, Spotted by the flesh. Well, if you're going to get a D on God's report card, bless God, get it for delivering souls from hell. Or you can get an F for failing to witness. It's going to be tough one of these days. I believe at the great white throne judgment, the Bible says we'll be standing behind the great white throne when those that are lost come to stand before God. And when the books are opened and the reports made and God's fixing to condemn them to hell, I believe Jesus is going to ask them and until I, learn, I think or God shows me different, he's going to say, why, why didn't you not accept my son as Savior? I'm afraid they may turn around and point your, their finger and say, because you did not tell me about him. I lived across the street from you for years and you never said anything. You never invited me to church. You never read the word of God to me. Nothing. It's your fault. Hmm. Getting tough, isn't it? Remember, it's your job to tell. You understand that's the only job God give us as a Christian to do in this world is to tell others and win others about Christ. And you either do it or you fail. You don't know why our world is in the shape it's in and why it's as wicked as it is? Because God's people are failing to do what God told them to do. Win others to Christ. Remember, to do that you must have compassion. Do I like what's going on in this world? Absolutely not. Do I like the people that are doing the things that are so terrible in this world? Absolutely not. Didn't say I had to like them. Said I had to love them like the Lord loved me. I don't have to like what they do and I don't have to like them. But I have to love them in the Lord and have compassion. What does compassion mean? Compassion means that you feel for them when they don't deserve to be felt for. That's what compassion is. Do they deserve it? No, they don't. But do they need it? Yes, they do. If we're ever going to reach the world, we first have to have compassion. We have to look beyond the sin to the soul. You understand that's the reason Jesus hung on the cross. He looked beyond our sin to our soul. He saw the need of our soul and that's what we need to see. 
there's still a soul. Wicked as they may be, and as horrible a thing as they may have done, unless somebody has enough compassion and enough concern to give them the word of God, they're going to split hell wide open. You know what? Some of the most wicked people in the world have become some of the greatest preachers in the world because someone gave them the word of God. You never know what God will do. You understand that we're the only one that can reach someone else. You ever stop and think about that? We're the only ones that can reach someone else. The Bible says the stars won't do it. The animals won't do it. But he said they will if we don't cry out. He said the rocks will if we don't. God's word's not, you know, and that's the sad thing. God's word's not dependent on me. God's word is not dependent on me doing it. God's word's going to accomplish what God wants it to. Whether I, God, look at the scripture. God will use lost people if he has to. It's not that God's word's dependent on me doing it. I'm dependent on doing it for God. It's God's threshold and doorway and window to bless me. We need to do it. Then last this morning, real quickly, we got to get to the bad one. And this one, you get double dose of it. What's the worst one you can get on a report card? F is the worst one you can get. Matthew 15 and 8. This people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. On God's report cards, you can get one of two F's. Faithful or far off. Which one is it? Faithful to the house of God or far from it? What do you mean, preacher? You faithful to every service like you ought to be or just hit and miss? Christers. I use one of Terry's terms. Christers. What's a Christer? Christmas or Easter, whether you need it or not. Amen. Faithful to worship him like you ought to? Or from afar off? You just hear because you hear. Not really into worship. We ought to be into and our whole purpose when we walk into this part of the service <laughs> is to worship God personally and individually. Yes, is it a group thing? Yes, it is. But it, in order for it to be what it ought to be as a group, it has to be individual first from every heart. Then as a group, it comes together as a group worship. But it has to be each of us. God wants us to be close and faithful with him in our lives every day. Not far off. The old saying is, I'll close with this. We get out there in the world and it seems like God is not there. And we go, God, where are you at? I believe God turns around and it's kind of like, you know, when the old joke, you know, woman and the man are married. Before they get married, you know, they're sitting on top of each other. Of course, I can't say it anymore. I don't drive a whole lot. But, you know, sooner or later, the wife's on the other side of the car. She said, honey, you just don't love me like you used to. We used to sit together. Who moved? I'm in trouble now. But I did that for a reason. God, we're out here. And seems like I'm all by myself and you're not here. I believe God turns around and goes, who moved? Wasn't me. I'm still right where I've always been. Where are you? Faithful or far off? What kind of report cards you got this morning? What kind of grade God going to give you this morning? I think you better think about it. Let's bow our heads in prayer.